there's a lot of reasons to love Unreal Engine and Blueprint in specific. And one of the things I love about Blueprint is, I was just messing about with this before I started recording, is that when you add in a new spawn actor from class, you actually have like a very powerful tool in the palm of your hand, which is if you choose a class here, I uh, prepared one for us right here somewhere, a bullet class to just show the example. Uh, I have nothing more than just a sphere to show where the bullet is, and then a projectile movement component, right? And then the initial speed for the projectile movement component will be at a thousand, and also set the max speed to a thousand because why not? And if we just put this into the level somewhere and we like pull it up a little bit, and then when the game starts, we will see that it shoots forward with about that force. Now, if we go into the bullets and we have the construction script here, which you might have seen real quick before, uh, we probably want to set the max speed here too. I forgot to do that. Uh, we can actually hook that up to a variable, right? So we can set this variable instead of to a thousand, only to 50. And then without having to go into the projectile movement component every single time, we just have one place uh, to change this. So now we see that it moves a hell of a lot slower, which is great. And we can set that up in the construction script, right? So this runs whenever a object is initially constructed, meaning that we can very easily kind of do things before we actually spawn in the actor, like setting these things that happen on begin play. We can set them up in the construction script, which is very, very useful. Now, the thing where Blueprint specifically comes in being so powerful is we can set this initial speed value to being both instance editable, which means that we just get access to it inside of the viewport in our details uh, panel to set every single instance of it that we put into the level to a different value if we want to. But we can also, and this is the big one, expose it on spawn. And what that lets you do is actually very, very cool. If we are going into our third person character here and we uh, spawn from class and we try to spawn in that bullet class, you will notice that suddenly we have the initial speed value as a pin here in the spawn actor uh, from class, the spawn bullets in this case. And we can just say, okay, when, whenever we press the F key, we want to spawn in a bullet with a, even something cool, like a random in range between 100 and 1500 speed, right? So we can just put that in there and then every time it's going to have a random initial speed. It does require uh, getting a transform uh, put into it though, which makes sense. So now every time I press the F key here, we're going to see it spawning in at different velocities because that is how we programmed that. Blueprint makes it very, very easy. If you want to do something like that in C++, it is ever so slightly more tricky to do because you need to spawn it deferred, meaning that you create the object but don't spawn it into the world yet, then run some functions or manipulate some data on that newly spawned object or that newly created, not yet spawned, object, and then you finish spawning it, which means that the begin play for it will run. We're going to do that right now here today. I already set up a simple C++ class for us in the CPP board class. We're going to walk through this entire thing, how to set it up. At the end, we'll have a functioning project file, which will be available on the YouTube membership page and the Patreon page uh, for my support. So a CPP bullet, it is simply a class that just inherits from a actor. I set up a quick projectile movement component and a quick bullet mesh uh, for it. And that is everything that we're going to need for now. I'm assuming that you know how to set up components in C++ if you're looking at a deferred spawning video. If you don't, go back and watch my introduction to C++ uh, series. I have it all combined into like one long video. It should really, really help you out. We're going to make a new function here, uh, which will be a void function for just like set uh, speed, which will take in a float for the new speed. It's really as easy as that. This is the function that we're going to run between creating the object and actually spawning it. So let's create a definition for that. And all that that is going to have to do is Copilot is way ahead of me. <laughs> we get the projection movement component. Uh, the initial speed, we just set that to the new speed and we do the same with the max speed. Uh, that's all that this function really needs to do. That's all that we need to do in this C++ class. So now let's go to our uh, character class here which is uh, just 
the third person character template class. It's nothing much I changed about that. And we're going to uh, make a U function here. And we're going to make that blueprint callable just to make it easy for me to call from blueprint from that debug key. And that will uh, be a void, not jump. No, no, no. Uh, quite close though. We're going to shoot. Shooting is kind of like jumping with a gun, I guess. <laughs> and we'll create a definition for that as well. Now, in here, usually Copilot has some weird ideas as to what I'm supposed to do. Uh, but usually what you would do is just you would get world and then spawn actor, get the actual location and rotation and all that kind of stuff. We're still going to start with the uh, get world function. But instead of using the spawn actor function, which you might be used to using uh, by now, what we're going to do is we're going to spawn actor deferred. And the rest of this uh, still kind of works out. So in this case, what we can do, uh, we can replace this ACPP bullet static class. It's just going to get you the default C++ class without any like proper values to it. Uh, what we're going to do instead here is I'm going to add a U property for T subclass of CPP bullets instead. So this will let us pick any class that is a child of a CPP bullet or the class itself. This will easily allow us to just make a blueprint class of it, given the proper values that we want to give it, maybe make a couple more different blueprint classes uh, off of it with different default stats. And we can just pick those easily from a drop down menu as a result. So instead of uh, passing in this static class, we're just going to pass in that T subclass off uh, with the transform. Now, spawn actor deferred, if we hover over it, will actually now return a ACPP bullet pointer inline, but we don't really care about it being inline uh, at the moment. Uh, so we can just make a CPP bullet pointer and call that bullet to spawn or something like that and set that equal to whatever this function returns. Uh, do be aware that you do need to include the CPP bullet file in order to do that, obviously. So now we have created this object. It exists in memory. We can do stuff with it, but it doesn't yet exist inside of the world. If we don't finish spawning it now, it will never get put into the world. So we want to make sure that our uh, bullet to spawn gets its speed set, indeed. That's the function that we just made. And then we want to finish spawning, which requires us to put in the transform for it again, for some reason. So it gets created. We can run functions on it. We can set variables on it. We can do whatever you want with it. And then it finishes spawning and actually starts running things like begin play and things like its projectile movement components will actually apply that initial speed and so on and so forth. Uh, it seems like I made this set speed function in the uh, protected section though. Uh, that needs to be public, of course, because the other class needs to be able to access it. And it really is as easy as that. So you yeah, just with like one or two extra lines of code uh, can set up things very similar to how we did in Blueprint. And as a matter of fact, actually even a little bit more because in Blueprint, we could only set values upon spawning. Here we can run entire functions if you want to. So we very much could have one class that when it is spawned in by one type of actor runs a certain type of function. But when another class spawns it in, it runs an entirely different function and does something entirely different all before it actually gets spawned in. So if any of that is relevant to its begin play, we have that set very, very well. Now, I already made a blueprint class off of the uh, C++ class as well. Uh, I'm assuming, again, you know how to do that. Just new class, and we have like CPP bullets. There we go. Uh, for this one, just to show, I set its collision to no collision, and we really don't need to do anything else in here. Matter of fact, I'm just going to prove a point uh, and we're going to set its initial speed and its maximum speed to zero, which it actually uh, just is zero by default. So, by the looks of this, it kind of seems like maybe it shouldn't move when we spawn it in, right? But now let's remove this uh, spawn bullets node and instead just use our newly made shoot function because I'll tell you, this will work. So yeah, the mesh for it is a little bit bigger, <laughs> but it still does uh, work exactly like how you would expect it to. But we've entirely set it up in C++ now. 
Of course, you can make this a little bit more interesting. Uh, instead of just shooting always at a speed of 1000, we can very easily go in here somewhere and say shoot takes in a float uh, for speed. Put that in there as well. And then set speed, we will just use the speed variable for that. And now when we compile this, we will see in here, we can give in a speed. We can use our random floats in range again and once again now we should see them shooting out at different speeds uh, randomly so that is how you spawn an actor deferred and that is how you copy the expose on spawn behavior that you might have seen on blueprint before i think it's really really neat this project file is available for patreons and youtube members uh, if you just want to snoop around in it it's a fairly basic concept but it might help having the code right at hand uh, for you to look at a little closer if this video by itself still left you a little bit confused hopefully that this has been useful and i'll be back next time with some more useful stuff hopefully and a very big thank you to all of my patreons you can see them on screen right now if you want to help out supporting the channel there's a link down below in the description to the patreon page a huge thank you to my cave student tier supporters earl monsoval erno and my cave digger tier supporters, Sergey Thomas,